All right, in this video, let me show you the initial software steps one needs to take to set up the smart objects. From a hardware standpoint, I have the router uh, connected up to this laptop, and I have the client uh, plugged in to a USB port. So let's begin in the router. Okay? Uh, this is my access point. There's nothing special about it, but there are two things one has to do in the access point. Uh, the first is to give the wireless network a name that I can remember. Uh, that's me, Valvano. Uh, but you can call it whatever you want. And then the second is to set up the security. And in this particular example, we're going to run without encryption. So there will be no security. Okay, so those are the two things I have to do in the router. Okay. Now from this point on, the, the, the router can either be connected to the Internet or not. It just has to be turned on. So. All right, the second step is to find the COM port of the launch pad. Uh, this is my device manager and what it looks like before I turn the power on to the client. All right, so I'll turn on the power to the client and plug the client in to the laptop. And you can see that it has a COM port here. This is the Texas Instruments Stellaris, and so it's going to be COM port 48. I'll have to remember the 48. The third step here uh, is to open the project. In this case, I'm using Kyle. You could use Code Composer Studio if you want, but I used Kyle. And what I need to do is set the name of the access point. And like we saw earlier, my access point was called Valvano. And that's set up here in line 59. Next, initially, I want to make sure it works. So I'm going to configure this to be neither a client nor a server. Uh, I'm going to set this up uh, to have an interpreter so that I can test it. So I will set the CRT mode to 1, and the other two uh, nodes here I'm going to set equal to 0. So I'm going to build. Okay. Remember, it's plugged in. Uh, I'm going to get a lot of warnings. Uh, don't worry about it. And then I'm going to download it. So I'm putting the interpreter code uh, into my client hardware. Uh, I could debug it if I want, uh, but more interesting, I'm going to open PuTTY. Okay, you remember uh, that what we're going to do is COM port 48. So serial COM port 48. Uh, the baud rate is 115200 and open. All right, here's PuTTY open, and I'm going to hit the reset button. Now, what this tells me is that this node, which is the client, is at 192.168.0100. This is the client, because that's what I have plugged in. And then if I execute a ping command, which is a way for me to test the hardware, I can see that this uh, smart object is able to communicate with the access point. So it's pinging the access point uh, to see if it can communicate. And that's all good. So this connection works. I'm going to repeat this process for both the client and the server to make sure they both work. And then I'm going to record the IP address of the server. And in my particular case, the IP address of my server is going to be 192.168.0101, and I'm going to encode that number here into this pound define. Okay. So my server is at uh, 101, and my client is at 100. So the last step is to program the client software into the client and the server into the server. Okay, so to set up the client, I'll turn on sensor node. Uh, that's the client. And I'll turn these two off. And now I have the build. Rebuild it. Download. Now I've plugged in the server. And when I turn it on, uh, the device manager will tell me, in my particular computer, it's going to be COM port 41. So I will restart PuTTY. Uh, serial mode, COM port 41. Baud rate 115200 bits per second. Open. Okay. And now I'm going to go back to Kyle. Uh, now I have the client plugged in, so I'll test it. A 001. 
That's the uh, CRT node here tells me it's uh, an interpreter. It's neither a client or a server. Build. Load. Push the reset button. And like I said, the uh, client is going to be at 192.168.0.101. I can test it to make sure it works too. So now I've tested both the client and the server to make sure they can connect to the access point. All right, that all works. Now I go back to Kyle, and since this is the server, I'm going to turn on the server mode here, rebuild, download. So I am now programming the server code onto the server hardware. Okay, so to summarize, I first set up the access point so it had a wireless uh, router name that I could remember and no encryption. And then I programmed uh, both of the smart objects using CRT node here so that I could test them and I could learn or discover the IP address of both this client and the server. And then I put the server IP address here uh, in software and program both the client onto the client and the server code onto the server. All right, now you try.